All right, here's an instructional video on how to install the Godzilla Raceworks slash Dotson Works L-Series bell housing for the CD009. And uh, once you get it unboxed, you'll notice there's a whole bag of hardware, the bell housing, and a machine front cover with a seal. If you have a new transmission, send us your old cover and we'll give you a core charge back for this, this cover. If it's a used transmission, we're not accepting those as cores. They need to be 100% new front covers. There is also supposed to be a gasket provided by us. If you didn't get a gasket, message us and we'll get one out to you ASAP. Remove all your clutch fork components, throw out bearing, clutch fork. Get it out of the way. And you're actually gonna make a cut along this whole casting ridge all the way around. And if you look on the inside, it's gonna cut pretty close to where this cover is. So try to really use a plug-in electric angle grinder rather than a air powered one so that you get the same amount of power applied the whole time. And it doesn't kick back because if it kicks back and nicks the cover, it's not the end of the world. But ideally you want to leave the old cover on and don't install the machine cover. So if you nick the old cover and it's damaged, you just won't get your credit back. Versus if you nick the machine cover, you'll have to send it back in for us to machine it. Alrighty, you can see we're uh, almost halfway through so far and uh, something that you really need to pay attention to is when you're going through this area here, you can see where these casting ridges are so you need to make sure to dig in a little deeper with the uh, cutoff wheel. For most of it, you're going to be pretty far away from the cover. The one area that you need to be careful is along this bottom section here. Pretty much this whole section here is where you run the risk of hitting the cover. I would say just to be safe from here to here, maybe go ahead and mark in red Sharpie or whatever color you need so that you know that once you get to this point here, that's where you risk contacting the front cover if you're not careful. So I'm just gonna let my ankle grinder cool down a little bit because this thing gets hot and we'll start back up on it. Alrighty, so now we you can see we have a clean-ish line all the way around that casting ridge. And it doesn't have to be perfect because the bell housing is not meant to rest against this. So when you go to bolt this new bell housing and front cover assembly on, if you have any contact whatsoever, you need to take it back off and kind of sand it down, lightly sand it down. But if you follow this casting ridge, um, unless you just want to clean this up, you don't have to. Um, but it's not meant to contact. There is supposed to be an air gap. And then so just take some compressed air, clean it all up. And if you have, you're using a used transmission, you definitely want to get some carburetor cleaner or some type of degreaser, clean it all out. You know, just clean it best you can. And then now we're gonna go ahead and put on the new bell housing and front cover assembly with the new bolts. And we'll explain that here shortly.
Alrighty, so we're getting ready to install our front cover and bell housing assembly. You'll notice a hardware kit comes with a bunch of different bolts. Um, you will need some type of thread sealant, um, as four of these bolts are going to require thread sealant so they don't leak. You'll notice that there are two studs in the pack. Those are your quote unquote special service tools. And what that is going to be for is for lining up the bell housing and the cover and everything. So you're just going to thread them in by hand. They don't have to be tight. They're literally just going to help you walk the new bell housing and cover on. And then the idea is that you unthread them when you're finished. So you thread those in and get your front cover out of the box, cut the zip tie there. Something else to note, I am the only one so far that has experienced this and I think it's just unique to the particular aftermarket starter that I had. These bolts may be just a hair, this bolt pattern, this, is a, this was 3D scanned with an OE bell housing. Uh, Derek at Dotson Works really made a point to make sure that this was done properly. And uh, so this anyways, this was 3D scanned. There are a random amount of starters out there that may have a slight variance on the casting to where one of these bolts will not line up. So you will have to ream out your starter mounting bolt holes if that happens, but only if that happens. If your starter bolts up, no problems. Just disregard everything I just said. Each one of these bell housing and front cover kits is checked in-house at Dotson Works before they ship here. He's got a whole test rig with an input shaft and a bearing to make sure that the alignment is 100% correct. So there's no, no guesswork, no room for error. So I just lightly sat these bolts in with an impact gun for now, a 3 8 cordless. I didn't go very tight because these do have a torque specification. We're just doing a test fit, so make sure you torque them down. Just double check all the way around. Make sure you have an air gap all the way around. It's a little tight here, you can see, but it is not touching. Just work your way around. And all of this gap that you're seeing is 100% acceptable. That's how this thing was designed. So now you can just unscrew your alignment studs and toss them in your toolbox or a rainy day, throw them away, sell them to the scrap guy, do whatever you want with them. Go ahead and install the rest of your bolts. These four are gonna require sealant um, because they go all the way through the front casing and into a wet hole. If you don't use thread sealant, it will leak. And the kind of thread sealant that we recommend um, some people like Loctite. I think Derek actually prefers the Loctite thread sealant. Um, this is made by Permatex. We use this uh, on the repair side of this shop. Uh, pretty much any type of uh, oil, coolant, whatever that needs sealant uh, for threads, this is what we use. Don't worry, I am going to loosen these back up and torque them to spec with a torque wrench uh, per the manufacturer's recommendations. I'm just doing this for a sample video to speed this up so you can understand what's going on. You can see 
why this cover needs to be machined because he's actually added some dowels into this cover so that it's located properly and we he's faced a couple of areas so that it clears um, so you can't just bolt this onto a regular cover without having to do some machine work to get it to locate properly and same with the dowel pins the dowel pins lock it in place is to make sure you get a proper fit every single time so the next step is from your cover that you took off this is where your new clutch fork pivot ball is going to go so install your pivot ball there and then you can go ahead and install your throttle bearing um, sleeve all those goodies which are all over here so we actually utilize here in-house the 350z throwout bearing shift fork collar everything we feel it just fits a lot better and it has a more positive feel um, and it properly engages the pressure plate so we would recommend sticking with all of the 350z components if you but if you're buying a complete kit from us, it's gonna come with this complete setup ready to go. And that's it. That pretty much wraps it up for the Dotson Works slash Godzilla bell housing install onto your CD009, CD00A. And that's it. Any questions, please feel free to email us or you can call the shop during business hours and we'll do our best to get to you in a timely manner. Thanks for watching.